Guys, welcome back. So uh, we have a new uh, feature on, mm. on the channel this week, um, and it's specifically dedicated to our Patreon members, uh, to our patrons, and we ask them uh, every week, certainly when we're coming up to film, and what they would like to see us film, yep. uh, what topics w they would like us to address. Mm. So this week we had a great response. We had 38 comments. Uh, on, within on, a day. <laughs> yeah, within a day. It was, it was brilliant. So we decided that the new feature we'd have was we would pick one of the comments, one of the requests, and we would we would focus in on that yes, specifically. Exactly. So this week uh, we picked uh, Joe Lucarelli's uh, question Comment, yep. about um, kind of through ball flight. How do we address angle of descent um, and spin? And, and spin, yes. Yeah. So yep. do we look at angle at stopping power basically? Stop power. Right. So are we looking at angle of descent? Are we looking at spin? Mm. Okay. The moral of the story is we're looking at both. Right. Okay, so both are combined to obviously, you know, create flight, you know, the, the elements of flight, speed, launch, spin. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at how does a green receive the golf ball? How do you get your ball to stop mm -hmm. the way you want it to? Yeah. And I guess what is cool about how we did this test and discovered the differences that can be made just by changing a golf ball. Right. And people are often, okay, how do I stop my seven iron faster? Should I get yeah. a new set of irons? Should That's I change right. my shafts? Mm -hmm. And there's some better ways of going about it, clearly. There is. I mean, in, in, in order for us to bring the most value to you guys watching is to try to bring a nice balanced view of this thing. Mm. So there's going to be people out there who have uh, sort of higher launch, lower spin ball flight right. characteristics. There are going to be some of you who are maybe a bit steeper who have lower launch, higher spin characteristics. So we thought we would bring this uh, from a point of view that if you are on either side of the spectrum, we can show you how you go about stopping the ball right. more for your swing for your type of swing for you guys specifically and you know we, we we have we have obviously matt's you know delivery to deal with but we've taken matt's delivery standardized it and and created two separate ways to get the ball to stop faster yeah so we took a selection well we hit a ton of shots yeah and we as you'll see, made the delivery characteristics of them about as close as humanly possible, you'd say? Yeah, it really, really was. Yeah. I mean, we, Seven irons were hitting? We were, to the decimal point, we were hand-picking the amount of deliver, uh, delivered loft, mm. so dynamic loft, uh, the angle of attack, so we're controlling the spin loft right. uh, in order to control the launch conditions. So um, we were able to see some staggering results. I mean, um, I'm not sure which video will come out first, whether this one or our golf ball one on the Kirkland golf ball, but we were able to utilize something we found in recent weeks mm -hmm. is a golf ball that spins super low, crazy mm. low in the, in the AVX. AVX, yeah. And a golf ball that spins beyond what we thought a golf ball could spin at. I mean, almost, you know, for those of you who are old enough to remember the, the Balata golf ball. You think it's uh, kind of on that level? Honestly, almost? I mean, and, and here's the next thing. We're going to try and dig out. Uh, uh, I'm going to go on eBay tonight and try and pick up some Tour Balata titles. That's a golf great balls idea. Yeah. And, and, and uh, compare that against See that. See who spins more. Exactly. So we literally were able to get two golf balls, modern golf balls with the mm. modern solid construction with 2,000 RPMs of difference in spin. On a seven iron. On a seven iron. It's ridiculous. Crazy. So obviously, like you guys know, um, mm. when it comes to what increasing spin, um, launch angle normally goes down a little bit. Right. Like we, we've talked about that with higher the wedges. Higher spin balls. Exactly. Right. The higher spin, the more the ball will actually be pulled down slightly right. initially. Then obviously, the more spin it has, the more lift it will then get through the spin. Right. So we're the talking about basically how a ball reaches its peak. Correct. Exactly. Gotcha. So we basically, you know, we're able to get both golf balls to land at 47 degrees into the green, which for right. a seven iron is great. You know, right. it's really nice. Mm -hmm. If you play on the PGA Tour, you might want it a little bit steeper because your landing zones are smaller. You want the ball to come to a stop quicker. Yeah, the greens are generally firmer, the greens are generally faster, so you want more stopping power uh, coming into the green. So you might want to, you know, have that coming in steeper, but for us uh, kind of weekend warriors, mere mortals, we don't need that. We're no. not, our greens are not that fast. They're not that difficult. We're not playing the US Open. No, and stuff they're not like tucking that. pins on you on a Wednesday afternoon. Better not be. Uh, hope not, <laughs> exactly. So we thought this would be a way of delivering two, two ways of stopping the ball. So yeah. uh, let's kind of run through these, these numbers here. So we saw about uh, two and a half degrees of difference in launch angle and 2,000 RPM to spin difference just by changing the golf ball. And just a massively different looking yeah. and, and flying golf ball. Like the side angle 
view there. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the, the AVX is going so much further in total, but it's it's yeah. also way higher in total peak height. If, yeah, 12, 12, 12 feet uh, higher. 12 feet in, in, yeah. in peak height, so way higher. I mean, you see the, the image there of the, the red flight and the yellow flight, and mm. um, really, really interesting to see both of those trajectories from that side, an, side on angle that we don't normally get that perspective of right. seeing uh, right. when we're hitting the shot, but uh, really interesting to see those. Um, so, I mean, they both stopped relatively quickly. The high spin ball tend, it just did dig in a little bit more. A little bit more, but again, we're, we're talking about a simulated, mm -hmm. uh, or a piece of software, I yeah. guess, that simulates how the ball would react on a green. It may react. That's it. I think the ball would probably come to a stop, in my opinion, mm. faster in both cases. Well, I mean, because we have standardized the land angle, yeah. angle descent, both at 47, the one that spins the most will stop Will faster. stop a little bit right. faster, right. But if we get it coming in, you know, obviously flatter with more spin mm. versus steeper with less spin, that will be an equalizer. That will be that. Th those those will be two different ways to stop it. So, guys, if you're if you're the shallow swinger, mm -hmm. the guy who doesn't take the big divot but hits it quite high, so you're you're shallow but have high delivered loft, you're relying on angle descent to stop the ball. Gotcha. If you're the player who who gets a little bit steep on it and squeezes it, so you push that angle of descent down, and obviously you have less loft because right. of that. You're, you're the guy who needs to spin it a little bit more. Gotcha. So you're kind of going to have a little bit lower launch, but more spin. So you need the spin to stop it mm. when it comes into the green. So if we, take, ways to do it. if we take the AVX and take five degrees off that descent angle, let's mm -hmm. say it's way flatter, that yeah. amount of spin. Now we're talking about a ball that really will run out. It will. It will hit the green and it will yeah. bounce through the back. And the high spinning Kirkland ball needed all that 7,000 mm -hmm. RPMs to actually come to a stop as well. I really remember, Matty, when I first started club fitting a um, while ago. Um, a while ago. A while ago. <laughs> half my life ago. Right. Uh, 17 years ago, I started in this game. So um, at that time, launch conditions were, were just being talked about mm. in, in you know, common terms. Launch angle, spin rate. Everyone was concerned on the first half of the golf ball. The first half of first the flight. First half of the flight. Everyone wanted to worry about what's your launch, what's your spin. Mm, okay. I'll never forget 2006, I got my first track, man. Um, we then were, were, were kind of paying more attention to the second half of the, the, mm. the ball flight. So obviously first half would be important, but the second half, how the ball would come into the green, we were seeing so much more of, okay, if your launch and spin is this, what does the second half look like? Right. Whether that be a driver coming in flat enough, you know, 34, you know, degrees coming into the fairway. So you optimize not only rollout, but mm -hmm. also control. Okay. When 28 degrees is too shallow and the ball would then, you know, if it's a slightly kind of, uh, yeah, con yeah. or slightly Take kind of uh, curved fairway, it might, might roll into the mm -hmm. rough. So there was all these sorts of variables to control the second half of the ball flight. Interesting. And I think that's such an overlooked thing, even still when the ball's coming into the green, not mm. enough people are thinking about the angle of descent yeah. and how the ball is receiving that green. Interesting. And, and it'll depend, I guess, a lot on what kind of greens you play on. Yeah. So would you say you could get away with sort of that sort of high, heavy ball, the ball that doesn't spin very mm -hmm. much, but has a decent amount of height to it. Mm -hmm. If the ground is quite soft, that ball is going to plug essentially and stop really fast anyway. Yeah. And the tour players that play on those really firm greens, they need both. They need that descent angle and spin. And some spin to make as the, well. To make the thing stop. That's, that's exactly it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where you see guys, you know, magicians like Mickelson when it mm. comes to the, you know, how much he can get those those wedges to spin and that sort of thing. And how and high he hits them too. It's quite incredible. So he manipulates obviously his, mm. the, his, his angle attack, you know, and, and gets, gets really steep on it, but maintains the loft and gets such a good contact that he generates so much spin in those, those short shots. Right. Um, so it's yeah, maybe we'll try and do a video and try and recreate some of those high spinners. I've seen some yeah. great stuff. Um, James Ridyard does some great stuff on uh, on on kind of recreating certain shots that tour players hit. He's, oh, okay. a, he's a he's a short game wizard. Oh, that's great. Uh, really phenomenal got a teacher uh, instructor, and he he's very um, specific to the short game. So he he'll, hmm. he'll recreate really high spin shots, and it's it's really neat to see. That would be interesting, yeah. But I think hopefully this is providing some value for the guys who are struggling with their ball coming into the green and how to stop it. That's the, I think that's the moral of the story here. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, uh, to, and, and going about it through the golf ball. You know, we obviously come at it with so many different ways. You know, the CG in the golf club, the shaft, right. the loft, the, the everything. 
this is, this is just one variable that's the golf ball. And I was going to ask you, how hard would it have been, give me one golf ball instead, mm -hmm. you're fitting me for a 7 iron. How hard would it be for you to make that much of a ball flight difference with the other things you have it's in the shop? It's not going to happen. You'd have to make a big difference, like loft, I guess, right? It's loft, yeah, but you I mean, can't change, you know, you oh. can't keep a launch angle mm -hmm. and lower spin just with loft. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing, amazing what can be done just by picking this sleeve instead of that sleeve. I mean, we're we're going to see club to club. If you hit me, your four, your five, your six, we're going to see six to 800 RPMs of difference club to cut, club right. to club. Right. We've literally, we've changed uh, spin launch profiles by three clubs. Right. So you may as well be hitting, you know, like a four, that's four iron spin yeah. and seven iron spin there. Gotcha. So you've basically given me, you've almost, I've almost been hitting a five iron, almost, in terms of distance. Without delivering five exactly. iron loft. Yeah, yeah, hitting the exact same it. shot, crazy. Interesting. Yeah. Um, this, this is a fun test, I loved in these it ones. It was cool. Yeah. We didn't really know exactly what we were gonna do with this data. We yeah. were hitting it and we just noticed some really interesting stuff and thought we'd chat about it. I think we've learned so much about, you know, recent uh, different characteristics of different golf balls in mm. recent weeks doing all these tests with you guys. and. You know, we, we just kind of saw two really extreme golf balls in this case, you know, AVX and Kirkland, and we thought, let's let's mesh this together and, and kind of show you guys what that what that kind of uh, nets out. Very cool. In terms yep. of the result, good. Uh, Joe, I hope this has been good. This is one. This one's for it's you. For, it's dedicated um, to Joe. Yep, dedicated yep. to Joe. This is this is. We're going to try and make this a weekly series where we do pick a, one of our uh, patrons and we're, we're going to dedicate a video to you guys. And yes. we're going to really select a great question that we think will provide value to the whole community mm -hmm. on YouTube, not just the, the the Patreon members, the whole YouTube community. Yeah. Uh, but the, it will be selected from from Patreon. Um, so just a, another way for people to get deeply involved in what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, we, um, we want you guys to have the input, the direct input, where you're really uh, kind of suggesting the, the videos, and, and we'll obviously do our own. You yeah, know, uh, is on top of that assessment. But, yeah. yeah, but I mean, if, if anyone's wondering, a lot of times we do get questions. Fair enough. Lynn, what are you doing with Patreon? This mm -hmm. is one of the big things yeah. we're doing. Do you yeah. want to get really involved and, yeah. and influence what we're up to? Mm -hmm. This is kind of yeah. part of the vision. And, and this week's been great. I've had more track man reports more GC quad reports nice. this week so what we are analyzing for our uh, our diamond and platinum members yes uh, they they have the access to send us those those reports and let's let us dive into the numbers with them yeah, and you're fitting them online right we're basically their yeah. online fitters so yeah. if you don't have the access to come and see us sending those track uh, track man or GC quad reports those foresight reports it's, it's a brilliant way of, of getting sort of your, your remote fitter, if you like. It's, Agreed. It's pretty neat. That's been awesome. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed doing it, and we'll see you again soon.